Good morning. Welcome to the Huntsville United Methodist Church. It's wonderful to see all of you today. If you'll join me in the bulletin for a couple of announcements. This morning, the flowers on the altar are in honor of our blessings and celebration of our blessings given by Tom and Vicki Rapp. I saw Tom when I walked in and I said, boy, there must be a typo because you wouldn't do something that nice. And he said he didn't know about it. So thank you, Vicki. <laughs> A couple other quick announcements. We have the Connect Six coming up. These are our small group studies that are going to be starting this fall. This year they're going to be studying the Daniel Dilemma. You can see the dates in there uh, about those uh, small groups. We hope that you're able to join those. Also, we're going to have a memberships class uh, beginning at 8.45 and starting Sunday, September 23rd. Are there any other announcements before we turn over to Pastor Brian for a quick announcement? Okay, Pastor B. Thank you, Pastor B. And you're still right about Tom, man. I mean, you were spot on. Well, hey, morning, Tom. I'm glad you made the church today. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody here today. I've got just two things I'm going to share with you this morning. And the first one, I'm looking for Elizabeth. Where? Elizabeth, come on up here for a second. Elizabeth, yeah, come here. Now, if you remember a couple weeks ago, we baptized Miss Elizabeth. That's something we didn't share with you then, but we want to share with you right now. We have hired Miss Elizabeth to be our office administrator. <laughs> <Two separate days. laughs> Her official start date is September 1st. I don't know what day that falls on, but it's just, just a real cool way of starting. So, and Labor Day. So, you need to work on Labor Day. <laughs> Uh, there's no free rides or free lunches around this place. We didn't tell you that in the interview, but we expect you to work and work hard. Is there any men in the house? Yeah. See how far they are on you? I've been with so many years. So. Well, one of the other things we didn't tell you uh, in the interview is if you accepted the job, you get to sing solo, and they get to <laughs> then approve you, and if they like it, then you're in like Flint. So you ready? What song you have picked up? No. <laughs> Miss Elizabeth, anything you'd like to share today? All right. <laughs> well, I'll let you head back down there with Clemens. And again, folks, just a few And then the last thing I'm going to give you before we move on into worship is today we're having our church picnic out at Camp Wesley, and everybody is invited to that. And I hope that, you know, if you're kind of on the fence, you're like, oh, I don't even know if I'm going to go or not. Listen, you'll want to go to this. We have a whole camp uh, rented out or for, for the time we're there. Starts at 3, it's going to be over between 7 and 7.30. Friends, you can fish. You can keep the fish if you want to. Uh, we're going to have paddle boards, kayaks available, so you can go out there. They have, if you've been out there to see the pond at Camp Wesley, they have a big structure out in the pond that you can swim out to. Of course, the PFD's on. And you can get up there and you can jump off of them. And they've got the, like these log bags that are fun for launching people off of, and you used to do it when I was younger. I don't do that stuff anymore, the back won't allow me. But if you're younger and your kids love that stuff, it's a great opportunity. The swimming pool will be open, the pond will be open, you can hike out there, we've got the lodge uh, that we're going to be a part of. The weather's going to be getting better as the day goes on. So you know what, I'm going to invite you all to come out and be a part of it. We're going to have a dinner out there for you. Uh, after dinner, we're going to go down to the lake and have a worship service. The band's going to be out there tonight. We're going to take communion. And it's just a way to say thank you to God for a great summer and as a way to launch into fall, which is really kind of the start of our ministerial year or our Christian calendar at Huntsville. And it's just a great way for all of us to come together outside of this scope and just to give thanks and praise to God and to have a good time and to have genuine and authentic Christian community. So again, from 3 to 5, all the recreation you can imagine. Come on out. We're going to have fun. Uh, from about 5 to 6 or 5.15 to 6.15 is dinner time. We're going to have a great meal prepared for you out there. And then after that, we're going to head down to the lake. We're going to worship God and we'll take communion and music. Give thanks. Yes, Bill? Directions. Somebody might not know where it's at. Oh, uh, directions. God, I think we'd have that one covered, but I missed that one. Uh, right out on Township Road 37. Um, if, let's just say you're coming out of Bell Fountain North on 68, right? And you'll go past Eagles Campground. Everybody know kind of where that is in relationship. Um, 37 is that road just after that. Hang a right, about a mile and a half, two miles right down the road. You can't miss Camp Wesley. 
on the right. Go in there, there's plenty of parking. You're going to see some folks running around having a great time uh, when you get there. So, does that help? Township Road 37 of Bell Fountain, just north of Bell Fountain, a few miles. And again, bring your family, bring your friends. That's what this is about. You, know, you don't have to get a church member to come be a part of this. This is just a way for us to give thanks and to celebrate the fact that we have genuine Christian community amongst us. This is an Acts 2 kind of church. We want to celebrate that. So everybody is invited. And I know some of you said, hey, I'm bringing my family members. They don't attend church, and that's okay. But what a great way to maybe introduce them to the life of the church. That's part of what this is about as well. Everybody has a place at the church, and this is just one way we go about it. So I hope to see all of you out there today ready to have a good time. So I think with that, I will turn it over to Miss Alice. You ready to worship? All right. Let's all stand as we begin our worship this morning with Shout to the Lord. Let's stand as we stand.
and include these persons now before you in your care. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. And now let us all join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of both the Old and the New Testaments. I ask you, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. And he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. And now I ask you, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Very well. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. And in the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through the water. After the flood, you set in the cloud the rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan, through the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell our God's mercy each day. And then in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of the womb. He is baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. And now, God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water. And for those who will receive this water, to wash away their sin and to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives and dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. All right. I would, if you would come on up. Around here. I was always like to say, we have water from the Sea of Galilee in here. So truly, this is holy water that's going to be going upon your child as she comes to the water of her baptism. So, Mama, I want to ask, can I hold her? Miss Avery, can I hold you? My sweetheart. Folks, this is Avery. Isn't she a sweetheart? And I feel very fortunate that I get to hold her because most times when she is brought into this church, she's one hot commodity. And, uh, there are people everywhere vying to hold her. And, uh, so, Miss Avery, I'm going to tip you just a little bit. And Dad, I want to ask you, what full name have you given this child? Avery Jo Young, today, baptize you in the name of the Father. <laughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Avery, in the born of water and the Spirit, may you be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all the days of your life. And all the church agreed and set together.
you forever have the water for baptism sealed in it now. And um, while you go to that, Dad, I'm going to present to you her certificate of baptism uh, as a keepsake in the life of the church. And if you guys don't mind, I'm going to take on a victory lap. But as I come around the table, why don't you just show a little joy and celebration for the baptism? <laughs>
With that, how about we just bow our heads? Let's have a word of prayer, okay? Well, God, we want to give thanks to you that we get to be part of your church here on earth. And you know better than any one of us who are in here that we are far from perfect. But thankfully, God, I don't think that's where you get hung up. Brother, you call us to be part of a family. To those of us in this house who are broken, we're invited. To those of us who are ashamed of the past and of sins that just seem to bother us, we're invited. To the timid, to the humble, the arrogant, the rich, the poor, regardless of color, regardless of gender, regardless of what clothes we have on. God, you not only call us to be part of your family, you don't only just invite us to be part of your family. You allowed your son, Jesus Christ, to die a sinner's death that we could be part of your family. So God, thank you for the blessings in our lives and for the blessings of this community in your church. Because it's all made possible your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so now, God, we offer ourselves to you, and we offer this prayer to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, along with the prayers of all our people. God, today we pray for Adam and Mandy, for their kids, Ken, and now baby Jared. And God, we thank you that you brought Randy back, and, and he's recovering from his surgery. And Lord, today we lift up to you Anita and Rhonda, Mary, Tony, and Kristen. We pray for Matt and Peggy, Sue Ann, for Scott, Shannon, and their family. For Brianna, Tyler, Mike, Debbie, and Caleb. We give to you Billy. We pray for the Huntsville Fire Department and the Hunt family. We lift up to you Josh, Aaron, Jack, Amanda, and Dylan. We pray for Chad, Katie, Kylie, for Heather and Henry, for Callie, Keith, Pam, Dale, and Maggie, as well as for Cheryl, the Cole family, Stephanie, Trisha, and Kylie. Today, Lord, we lift up to you the Gotez family. For Susan, Austin, and Sandy. Pat, Don, and Ray. For Britt and Dustin. Bob, Loretta, Mary, and Shirley. We pray for Trudy, Carolyn, Jairus, Mike, Andrew, Blake, and Jesse. And likewise, God, we pray for Janice, Tina, Tanner, and Tom. For Jill and Steve, Larry and Doris, Karen and Steve. We offer to you Scott, Shannon, Mike and Sarah, Shirley, Larry, Peggy, and Liana. We pray for Carol, Abe, and Bill, Bud, Rick, Sarah, and her family. For Ellen, Shannon, Faith, Cindy, and Steve. For Grace, Jason, and Bill. We pray for Vicki, Dorothy, Norma, and Bill. And God, for all the prayers that get brought to this time and place, be they silent and unspoken, God, you know that. You speak that language. And today, God, we rejoice with Dave when the waters of her baptism to know she's crossed a threshold to start a new journey in her life. We pray for her, for her parents, for her family. We got all these prayers. We now lift up to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray aloud and together in one common voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to the temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 All right, gang. <clears throat> We're going to go to the Gospel of Matthew this morning. We're going to read from chapter 12, verses 20, or 46 through 50. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to follow along. If you want to use a few Bible, you can do that. Or if you just would like to see up on the screens, that's quite all right, too. But I want to let you know, we wrapped up our, our series last week of vows. 
we're moving into a different one. This one is called Connect. Now, you might have seen a bunch of the signs around the church, Connect 6, Connect 6. You know, as we get into the fall of the year, that's really, as I've already alluded to, it's the start of our, our church calendar, so to speak, our, our planning calendar in the church. And we want to invite you, we're challenging people here, to just take six weeks out of your life, plug into a small group or a life group here, and, and see if God doesn't have a word for you, a vision for you, a plan for your life that becomes a little bit clearer. You get to connect with, with the Christian community, create authentic and genuine community. But it only happens when you decide to connect with God and God's people. So, what I want to do is, uh, I want to go there, I want to take us there, I'm going to read this scripture, it serves as a nice intro to the fact that we are about creating Christian community here, and about connecting with one another. So, let's go ahead and pull this up, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 46 through 50. Hear these words of Jesus when he was teaching. While he was still speaking to the crowds. His mother and his brothers were standing outside, wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, wanting to speak to you. But to the one who had told him this, Jesus replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Yeah. But, I, you know what he said? For all who hear the word of God, we are the ones that are blessed. And he said, is there an amen? Amen. Very good. We got him on the right track. We'll get him growing pumpkins next. He'll be a preacher and a pumpkin grower. Well, again, friends, um, we're really serious around here about the idea of wanting to create deeper, richer, more meaningful Christian community. And we know it happens when people connect. And the research has been fleshed out, and this we know, when people are engaged in life groups and small groups, spiritual growth is accelerated. It happens at a greater pace because when people get together, they realize a few things. Number one, I'm not in this all by myself. Number two, I don't have to be a biblical scholar to love God, to love Jesus Christ, to be a Christian. I don't have to know the Bible inside and out. If I come as a shock to some of you, I do. Oh, yes. Is that Avery? It baptized her, she thinks she can preach. I tell you. I love the kids of Huntsville. But the point is, we get together and we learn together and we grow together and we experience what we call an absolute kind of church. Where the spirit is alive, where fellowship is rich. And I want to spend the next four weeks doing my best job to help you understand how important Christian community is and how vital it is that we connect as the church with God and with each other. And just to get us started this morning, I've got a little video uh, that just speaks to the fact that it's time for us to connect. So, Don, make sure we're all queued up on the sound. Phil, here we go.
today, I stumbled across a pretty interesting story that I wanted to share with you. Former movie star, and some of you might be familiar with this name, former movie star, Beth Vickers, mostly known for her role in The Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. Ring a bell with anybody? Movie? It wasn't, it wasn't an, an you know, Emmy or Oscar award winning kind of movie, but it was a movie nevertheless. Um, she, so she starred in it. Now, if I'm honest with you, and I tell you this, uh, it's because I'm just trying to be honest with you. She also had a little stint as a Playboy Bunny, okay? That's for a different time. That story goes to a different place. But uh, Yvette Vickers lay dead in her Los Angeles home for nearly a year. It wasn't until her neighbor noticed the spider webs around her mailbox that she decided to look in on her. So taking a little bit of a risk, her neighbor went over, punched a hole through a window by the door, reached in, unlocked it, opened the door, only to find a trail. She had become a bit of a hoarder. It was mail, junk, clothes, trash, and it was a trail that led to a back room in a house where when she got to the room and looked in, she saw a bed, her body now mummified, sitting in a chair, next to a heater still running, in front of a computer screen still on. No one noticed. No one checked on her. She died a single woman, no children, completely disconnected from family and friends. Now, after a search of her phone bills to try and make sense of what happened, detectives discovered no, no calls were made to any family members, no calls were being made to friends, but rather her only effort at connecting with people came over the internet. And those were with people who were her fans from years ago, groupies, if you would. No face-to-face -face contact. No going out to eat together. No social engagements. Just isolation. Just loneliness. And what a difficult way to die, if you think about it. You know, there's a book out there entitled All Things Better, and it's where children are asked to solve really big problems in the world, where children are asked for their insight, their input on how to solve grown-up problems in the world. And one of the toughest problems that the kids were presented with uh, was this. Here's the question. Here's the problem. With billions of people in the world, someone should figure out a system where no one is lonely. What do you suggest? So this is what uh, a young boy, Max, at the age of nine, he suggested this. Let's make food that talks to you while you eat. For instance, the food would say, how has your day been? Do you have any plans for the evening? The one thing the food would not ask is, what are you having for dinner? That would be too awkward of a, a conversation to have with food. All right, this one comes from another young uh, boy, nine years old. His name is Brock Byron. And he says this, sing a song. Stomp your feet. Clap your hands. Sometimes I think no one loves me. So I do one of these things. At nine years of age, a little boy admits, sometimes I don't feel loved. Sometimes I feel lonely. So again, here's the question. And here's the problem. With billions of people in the world, someone should be able to figure out a solution no one is lonely. Okay. Turns out, turns out somebody did come up with a solution. It's a guy who goes by the name of Jesus and his solution. Are you ready for this? His solution was the church. His solution is where you're kind of sitting at right now and what you're a part of. Now, when people hear the term church, they often think of a place to go, a destination, a location. But when you, when you probe the depths of Scripture and you study what Jesus had to say around the idea of the church, and when you study Paul and the epistolatory text about the idea of what church is, you realize that there's a radically different idea at work and going in play right there. Now, Jesus would say, church is not going to be a building. It's going to be a family. It's more than just a place where you go. It's going to be people you connect with. Now, this is not your biological family, to be sure, although there are people, uh, extended biological families, that congregate together when they come to 
church here. And that is a beautiful and a wonderful thing. But Jesus says, nevertheless, you can still have a literal family here. And you can have a spiritual family here. And this, this is where people will be welcomed. And where the forces of isolation and loneliness will be beaten back. And this was the idea Jesus had in our scripture lesson this morning. I want to recap it for you. So Jesus is with his disciples. And if you read the text leading into this, he's with the Pharisees, he's with the elders, he's with a whole bunch of people. And he's just teaching and he's just preaching and he's just going out and he's really pouring his heart into this. And somebody from, I'm guessing, outside the tent or outside the temple comes in and says, Hey Jesus, your mom and your brothers are out there and they wanted me to relay a message to you. They want to talk to you. And for just a moment, think about this. How many of you, like, if I'm in a meeting um, and I get a phone call and I look down and I see that it's Alice, or if I see it's Hannah, I get a text from Hannah, um, I'm pretty quick to address that. Because I've told them, you know, you have the access. I, I will tend to this in a heartbeat. It's my life. I know if I'm doing something and I see a, a phone call from my mom or dad pop up, I mean, I am on that in a hurry. You, your parents age, you get a little concerned about it, and you're like, oh, everything's okay. So, that is kind of a background. And then, guess what? Here we are with Jesus. Somebody comes in and says, your mom and your brother's going to talk to you. Jesus does not get to panic, by the way. You remember what he says? We just read the text. Look at this on the screen. Let's pull this up, Phil. He looks at his disciples. He looks at the people around him. And here's what he says. Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples. He says, here are my mother and my brothers. And he goes on to say this. Oh, go back into that air Sorry. Come on, Phil. We need you to be with it today, okay? Bring your A game. Nobody look at Phil. He feels bad right now. <laughs> right there. For who? You're okay. I love you, Phil. Grace has been applied, you know. That's right. You've been atoned for. So. Uh, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven, is my brother and my sister and my mother. And effectively, what Jesus says, listen, you want to follow me? You want to do the will of my Father in heaven? Guess what? You're in. You're family. You get to be a part of one of the greatest things I'm creating that, that history and the Bible goes on to call this church. We call it the body of Christ. You do the will of my Father in heaven and you're in. You're in. You're a part of it. You belong. And you know the most fascinating element about this when you read that? It's the ease and the clarity of understanding. You know, sometimes, sometimes that you read stuff in the Bible and you're like, I don't get it. I don't connect with it. I don't understand it. This stuff right here, whoever does the will of my Father in heaven, is going to be my, my mother, my brother, my sister. You're in. Now, this is a place where hurts can be healed, where joys can be celebrated, where failures are going to be acknowledged, and where we're going to speak truth, biblical truth to each other, such as no one is perfect. And you know what? Despite our best efforts, guess what? People in the church from time to time are going to disappoint you. From time to time, I'm going to disappoint you as a pastor. I want to apologize preemptively about that, but I also want to ask a very important question here. How many people here ever found your biological family to be a disappointment? Don't raise your hand. It's just a rhetorical question. Just, just a rhetorical question. Nobody needs to show their hands at this point. Right. Right. Well, I want to say something to you today. And this is big. Some of you might actually think I'm going to push back against that again. I, I don't know, guys. But I want to say something to you today. Believe it or not, your biological family wasn't meant to be your only family. And it wasn't meant to be your ultimate family. You let that sink in for a moment because family is, is a pretty big deal these days. Almost to the extent sometimes we idolize this whole concept of family. But what Jesus is saying is your biological family isn't your ultimate family. Is it your only family? Instead, and rather, God wants everybody to be part of His family. This was His intent. This is what He aches for. 
This is what Jesus died for. We're called to be a part of this family and connect. Not just with Jesus, but with each other. And then to try and work our tails off at creating a genuine and authentic Christian fellowship where we experience the love and the grace of Christ at work amongst us. And the reason this is so important, and it is very, very important these days, the reason this has become so important is because uh, no one could have ever imagined, but uh, the idea of genuine and authentic community is fading at a pace that is unreal. Seriously, uh, this points to uh, the irony of our culture and our society today that says we're trying to connect with social media, we're trying to plug into more things, but as a society and as a culture, we're actually splintering apart. This comes from the American Psychological Association. I want you to hear their findings on this. Quote, we live in a world of instant and absolute communication, unbound by time or space, and yet we suffer from unprecedented alienation. This is an epidemic of loneliness in our day and age. We have never been more detached from one another, nor more lonelier. In a world consumed by ever more novel modes of socializing and communicating, we've actually become less and less of a society. We live in an accelerating contradiction. The more connected we become, the more lonelier we are. We were promised a global village, and instead, we inhabit a wasteland of information in front of a screen or on a telephone. End quote. Now you know what? It's kind of brutal truth. But I'm going out on the limb. I'm going to say this. You know I'm right when I read that. You know that's true. We hide behind screens. We try to find our value from likes on Facebook. <coughs> We try and score how many likes or hearts on Instagram, Instafriend, whatever it is. We do this. And in the process, we're losing more and more touch with each other. Now, because of this knowledge, we're going to spend the time in this series over the next four weeks trying to beat back the ideas of humanism, secularism, materialism, isolation, lonely. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take on the myth of the fact that we think if I just have enough friends on Facebook and if I get just enough likes on my Facebook posts, then my life will be happier. Because in the end, it won't be. It won't be. Research proves this and the teachings of Jesus poured out long before Facebook ever became a reality. And in the place, what we're going to do when we talk about being back those things is we're going to drill down deep into the idea of what it means to have genuine Christian community. What it means to belong to God and to God's people and how we serve with each other and how we serve God and how we give to God and how we give to one another. We're going to talk about that because we need to recapture for our sake and for the sake of this world what it means to be in community so that the church can do what it was supposed to do. You know what we say around here? The local church is the hope of the world. And if you're asking, how do we go about it? I'm glad you did. There's several different ways you can do it. But the one we... we we're addressing here today is real easy and real simple. It's called life groups. It's called small groups. It's called getting plugged in with those around you. And we have a whole sign up ready to, to, to go here in September. And I want to challenge each and every one of you to take six weeks out of your life and learn how to connect with God, with the Bible, and with God's people. We know that when we get together and we do face to face, loneliness starts to fade. God's presence begins to rise to the surface in our lives. But here's the challenge. You've got to actually go do it. You actually have to do this. And it can't be done just by sitting at a computer. We can do a lot of great things communicating that way. But at the end of the day, what really counts is this whole gift of relationships with one another. And we've got to be in contact with one another. You've got to fight, and I've got to fight, because I get the same urges. I've got to fight the, the, the desire sometimes and the pressing urge to live in isolation and loneliness. Sometimes I just want to say, I want my own space. I don't want anybody to bother me. And I've got to fight it. You know, I heard a story about a woman who phoned a friend. And she asked her friend, how are you doing? And she says, terrible. 
My head is splitting, my back hurts, the kids are driving me crazy, and the house is a mess, and I feel so alone. And the caller says to her, dear, I'm so sorry. I said, tell you what, I want you to go lay down, and I want you to get some rest. I'm coming right over. I'm going to be right over. I will cook your lunch, I will clean up the house, I will take care of your children. You just get some rest. By the way, I called because I wanted to know, how's your husband Sam doing? The lady on the other end says, my husband's name isn't Sam. The lady who calls says, oh dear, I must have called the wrong number. <laughs> Long calls. The woman on the other end of the phone says, does this mean you're not coming over? <laughs> <laughs> you got to come over. See, you know, what, what's changed in our world isn't the burdens that we carry. Okay, because we do, we carry burdens. We, we carry the burden of health. We want to we wanna live healthier. We want to live a longer life. That's not changed, right? Um, it, it, our parenting, it hasn't changed. My parents parented us. You're parenting your children. Our parents parented their parents, and their parents parented them. And it all goes on and on. Those burdens haven't changed in life. The burden of work, the burden of success, the burden and the fear of failure, none of that's changed, right? We still deal with all those burdens, just like our parents did, like their parents did, and their parents' parents did. We all deal with those burdens. But you know what has changed? No one's coming over no one's coming over. I'll text you. I'll call you. But no one's coming over. Fifty years ago, this was unthinkable. But that's the way things are changing. You see, we live in a world of amazing financial, educational, and technological opportunities to make our lives better. But at the end of the day, no one is coming over. And it's like we waste our lives in front of a computer screen or some social media platform that, we're, that our soul is craving for some kind of connection. But those devices, they don't deliver. They don't deliver like when two people and three people get together in the name of Jesus Christ. And they connect. And you know what the scriptures teach us? When two or three are gathered, Christ is amongst us. So, if you want to overcome isolation, loneliness, if you want a way to build genuine and authentic Christian community, you're going to have to show up. You're going to have to come over. You know, biblically speaking, and I'm going to close with this here today, at times I feel like we've missed our Christian calling to help bear one another's burdens. And this is what the Apostle Paul says uh, in his letter to, to the church in Galatia. Um, Galatians 6 2. So let's take a look at this. It's real simple. He says, Bear one another's burdens. In this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Now, I don't do this very often, but it was interesting enough that I wanted to point it out that if you study the context of this uh, from a Greek format, that term burdens, if you begin to define it and look at what it means in its context, it actually is meant as if someone is carrying a boulder, like a big, huge boulder. Anybody tried to pick up a 500 pound boulder? You can't do it, right? But you might be able to carry a 50 pound stone. You might be able to carry a 100 pound stone. How long do you want to carry that around? Not very long. Just because it gets heavy. And what the Apostle Paul says, in our Christian calling, in our Christian life, you know what we're supposed to do? Help each other carry one another's burdens. And what we look at when we see that and what we understand when we read it is, you know what? We weren't meant to live in isolation where we carry boulders by ourselves. In a very deeply spiritual practice, we were meant to connect and we were meant to help each other get through this crazy world. And in case you've not read or heard the news lately, this world is coming off the tracks and it is crazy. And I think we are down to the hope of Jesus Christ in the local church. And if on that reason alone is why I'm so definitive, and I just land with both feet to say, we as a church have to recapture connection and help and carry one another's burdens. And in a place like this, this is what I know. Okay? I've been doing this long enough. In a place like this, this many people, this is what I know. People here are carrying burdens. I know you are. I know you are. 
People in a place like this deal with things such as depression. And we don't want to talk about it. It's amazing because we you know when we outside of the church we struggle with things. You know, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with depression, and the doctor wants to put me on some medication for it, or you know, the family's trying to get ready, and, and we're shouting at each other coming to church. But boy, when we walk through the doors and put a smile face on, my life's great. Hey man, how you doing? I'm awesome. My family's awesome. I feel great. My health is awesome. Yeah, right? I could scare you to death with stories about what happened in my household growing up on a Sunday morning. When my mom told me I was going to wear, wear corduroy pants. And I told her, I am not wearing corduroy pants. World War III broke out that day. And we still went to church smiling. But as soon as we made it out of the church, World War IV began. We just put the fighting on hold for a little while until we could get back to the battlefield of our home. You know, people, when they come here, you know what they're carrying? A burden? They've got a sin they don't want to talk about. A sin that they hope nobody finds out. A secret. They've got a diagnosis, a health diagnosis, and it's scaring them to death. Something is happening to one of their kids. Their marriage is in trouble. Something's going on with how they deal with the anger. <clears throat> Something's going on in their sex life. Something's going on in their financial life. And they feel like they've got a boulder on their shoulders and it is crushing them. And you know what? If they just had enough courage, if they had just something to click inside their lives to say, you could share that with someone. In the context of Christian community, you know what happens to that person? The burden quits feeling so heavy. And life gets a little bit better. And you realize in that moment, you were doing the will of God. And you have become a mother, a brother, and a sister of Jesus Christ. And your family, your in. What your soul longs for. What your soul aches for. And this changes everything. So the real question becomes before us today, are you going to be coming over to church on Sunday consistently? Because you know this makes life better. It makes things work better. One hour on Sunday, or sometimes if a preacher gets long-winded, an hour and 15 minutes on Sunday. It makes all the difference in the world. But you don't mind an extra 15 minutes because it's so rockin' awesome. Amen? Amen. It wasn't bad. <laughs> Alex told me they'll never respond. But you got to come over to small groups. you got to sign up. you got to engage. And your kids on Wednesday nights at Turning Point, are they going to come over and work with Ashley and Ashton and Elizabeth and all the others who are plugged in? Because it's an army here on Wednesday night. So they can grow in Christian community and connect beyond their phones. When we have opportunities to serve in the name of Jesus Christ, you're going to come over serve joyfully. You know, God longs for you to be part of the family. He aches for this. His son died for it. And he wants us to make it happen. So the question is, are you going to come over? Let's stay in prayer. It is your desire, God, one of your deepest and heart's desire, that we would not do life alone, but rather we would be connected with you and with each other in the confines of the Christian community. So God, we've talked about it, we've read about it, we're here before you, and I just pray that you go to work in each and every soul. You reveal to us just how important it is to connect. We'll just leave it right there, God, and let you do what you have to do through the power of your Holy Spirit. We love you. We offer this prayer to you in the name of Jesus. We agree and said.
I hope all of you will come over to Camp with me tonight. We're going to have a good time. And we're going to take our best shots at creating genuine and authentic Christian community where joys are shared, where burdens are shared, and where life improves. So know this, you need not do life alone. But you are part of the body of Christ. You are part of the family. So go now in that joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.